Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Now we talk about tracheostomy, which one is familiar with. What is tracheostomy? Tracheostomy is a procedure to make a hole in the trachea and communicate it with neck skin. That's the, as far as the definition goes. Now, talking about indications of tracheostomy, the most important indications for tracheostomy is one, to bypass obstruction. Now, what are the cases which we have to bypass? There are tumors of the oropharynx or larynx or upper trachea. Infections like epiglottitis, severe tracheobronchitis, there can be bilateral vocal cord paralysis. One has to do the tracheostomy and trauma to the larynx or maxillofacial fractures uh, can give rise to obstruction of the larynx. Edema like large tongue or hemiglossectomy and so on or laryngopharyngeal masses uh, or edema uh, can cause obstruction of the larynx and that's why we have to bypass the obstruction and do a tracheostomy. Intubation failure, where intubation is tried, but one cannot put a tube in, so one goes for a tracheostomy. Foreign body swallowed and obstructing the larynx or the uh, upper trachea, one can go for tracheostomy. Subglottic or tracheal stenosis, one has to bypass this obstruction. Other indications for uh, tracheostomy Prolonged intubation is an indication for tracheostomy because there's a need for prolonged respiratory support and to improve the patient's quality of life, like easier toilet, easier cleaning, ability to speak and eat, not in comatose patients and increase the mobility. We do prolong, for prolonged cases of intubation, one prefers to do a tracheostomy. Now, third indication is to reduce an atomic dead space, which is 150 cc of air, in cases where there is uh, already a very low vital capacity in the patient, like uh, uh, status asthmaticus, or patients with severe chest trauma, uh, or patients with uh, uh, bronchiectasis. These are the patients who have got a very low, uh, um, very low uh, vital capacity, and it uh, to reduce that uh, dead space, one goes for tracheostomy, and to assist ventilation, which is uh, in cases of head and neck trauma, when the patient is usually comatose, uh, uh, one cannot do a prolonged intubation, so one goes for assist ventilation in order to put the patient on a ventilator one it, it, it's better to do a tracheostomy to uh, connect the ventilator uh, with the tracheostom now protection from aspiration is also an important uh, thing to do because a lot of patients who are comatose uh, or who have got a vocal cord paralysis may aspirate uh, quite often and give rise to chest infections. In order to prevent that uh, aspiration problem, one goes to do a tracheostomy. Types of tracheostomy, uh, we have got elective procedures and we have got emergency procedures. Now, elective is when we have got time to think about uh, the procedure and plan it, and we can take the patient to theta and do the procedure properly is called an elective procedure. Whereas emergency is usually a dire emergency when we, one has no time to plan the surgery and one sometimes has to go for emergency trichostomy in the casualty or emergency room as well. So elective type can be temporary type of trichostomy or it can also be permanent type. Now temporary type is when one has the hope 
that this patient is going to improve after a certain time when goes for temporary tracheostomy, whereas permanent tracheostomy in cases of laryngeal cancer, when one does uh, remove the, uh, the cancer and removes uh, larynx, then one has to do a permanent tracheostomy. Here are types of tracheostomy tubes, which can be either non-metallic, in the form of plastics and which can be cuffless without a cuff and cuff tubes with cuff. This is a cuff which can be inflated uh, and it prevents aspiration problems. So non-cuffed has no bulb here uh, to be inflated and these both types are being used in patients with tracheostomy. And other types are metallic. Metallic tracheostomy tubes. Uh, these are metallic type of tubes which can also be used in tracheostomy patients. Surgical techniques. As far as tracheostomy technique is concerned, one can do either open procedure or one can do percutaneous procedure. Open procedure is done usually in theaters, uh, whereas percutaneous procedures uh, usually done in ICUs where patients are already very ill and cannot be moved to theater. One sometimes does uh, a percutaneous type of procedure. Now, surgical, as far as open surgery is concerned, what we do, the, the principle of surgery in uh, tracheostomy is that one has to give an incision in the neck which is usually in the elective procedure, it's horizontal collar incision uh, in the neck uh, under anesthesia or sometimes uh, if uh, and, uh, the GA is not possible, one goes to infiltrate the tissues in the neck and gives a horizontal cervical incision in theater, having put a sandbag under the shoulders of the patient in order to uh, extend the neck a little uh, and one gives a horizontal incision after infiltration of the skin of the neck. Uh, it, the incision is usually given between the uh, lower border of the cricoid cartilage and the supraesternal notch. And one can also measure it with two finger breaths above the supraesternal notch one gives a horizontal incision. Having given the incision, one applies the uh, retractors and one separates the strap muscles in the midline and one sees the thyroid isthmus. This is the thyroid isthmus, which then is divided and ligated. And having divided and ligated the thyroid isthmus, one sees the trachea and incises it in the form of a flap, which shows this open flap here, this picture. And one puts a tracheostomy tube, initially a cuffed tracheostomy tube to prevent aspiration and ties it around the neck. And this incision, this incision is closed with one or two sutures around the tracheostomy tube. Here is a lateral view of the tube neck here and the tube going in into the trachea. Cuffed tracheostomy tube. Now, what is the care of tracheostomy tube? The most important thing to do is suction and humidification. This is two important things immediate under the immediate care uh, because one has removed the nose which serves to humidify the air and clean the air one has to humidify the air which the patient takes in through the trachea. So it acts as an artificial nose. Now, tube position uh, must be looked after as well to prevent uh, decubitus of trachea and not to cover it with blanket. Tube position, pay attention on patient's beard and chin position as well. Other is suctioning, regular suctioning is essential uh, but not too aggressive, not too much deep to prevent uh, trauma. 
skin care to prevent irritation and secondary inflammation due to discharge. Now, inner tube care is also important because that tube re, uh, may get blocked with crust and one has to remove and clean it every now and again. Complications of tracheostomy can be peroperative, can be damage to the vocal cords or injury to adjacent structures, great vessels, laryngeal nerves, and esophagus, post-obstructed pulmonary edema, hypotension, arrhythmia. These are perioperative complications, whereas early post-op complications can be early bleeding, this usually the result of increased blood pressure, plugging with mucus, uh, a tracheostomy tube may get blocked with mucus. There can be tracheitis, inflammation of the trachea, where it's incised, and cellulitis of the neck. There can be tube displacement and subcutaneous emphysema, and atelectasis of lungs if there is no uh, proper uh, aeration of the bronchi. Mm. Late complications can be bleeding from tracheo innominate fistula, tracheo and laryngomalacia, stenosis of the tracheal uh, tracheostom and tracheoesophageal fistula, or granulations and scarring in the trachea, and finally failure to decannulate means the patient is uh, difficult to have the tube <coughs> removed. Now, this was all about today's lecture. I hope you understood it well. And thank you very much. <laughs>